Number two feet two three four three Carolus Downer bus services. I call the member for Wall Sand. Mr Speaker, I move that this House notes um, that we acknowledge that Newcastle buses and ferries are operated by Carolus Downer after privatisation by the Government in July 2017 notes that a number of services have been cancelled without warning, stranding commuters from across the Walls End electorate, urges the Minister for Transport to work with Kaolis Downer to ensure that all Newcastle bus services operate reliably so that commuters can get to work or school. Um, now, this notice, I want to make two points about the notice, and that is, first of all, that this notice was given on the 12th of September last year. So it's been a number of months now that we've been really worried about the transport services that have occurred in the Hunter, and they're getting worse, unfortunately. So that's my first point. My second Order. point is... Conversation should be taken outside the chamber. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, the second point about the timing is the feigned outrage from the last notice of motion that was given yes just today. That was given yesterday. I've been waiting since September last year. That's what you call an important motion, one that you put up in the appropriate way and you wait for it to occur, like I am now. So this is an important motion. It's about public transport for us in Newcastle, and we're worried about it. Yeah. Prior to the transfer of Newcastle bus and ferries um, to a private operator last July, many, including myself and my Labor colleagues, publicly expressed reservations about the proposal even though the Minister promised the New Newcastle a world-class transportation system. The experiences from the last few months have been far from ideal. Immediately after the changeover, there was a spike in, the, um, in many delayed or cancelled services. More than 300 bus services were cancelled in the Walls End electorate alone. And which left hundreds of commuters and students relying on our buses to get to work or school, but they were stranded. They didn't occur. For months, some drivers were unpaid or not paid at all on time, and this was causing them great consternation, of course. Public cons consultation on the planned um, uh, works and changes to the network was limited particularly for the people that live in the western suburbs who rely on it the most. When the changes were announced, my office was flooded with phone calls, and I know all of the other local um, Hunter MPs were in the same situation. We were flooded with phone calls by local computer, commuters expressing their concern about the proposal. And after the changes were rolled out, our phones went into meltdown. My office had more than 100 calls and as many emails on top of a social media explosion of complaints and concerns. And that was immediately. We're not talking about now. That was just weeks within weeks of the changeover. There were no hard timetables available. Some bus stops were missing posted, and they didn't post timetables or maps. Online trip planners were not ready to cope with the demand. Parents were left to worry about how their kids were going to get to school or get, whether they were going to be stranded after school. The rerouting and rescheduling of services left um, to lead to confusion amongst commuters and even staff and bus drivers who had no control over the situation, and they were left to cop the worst of commuter frustration. Tempers frayed on day one of the city's bus timetable um, time overhaul, with drivers subjected to widespread abuse, said the Newcastle Herald. On the, on the first day alone, numerous verbal altercations between drivers and passengers was reported. And most concerning of all, a, driver, a, a, a brick was thrown at a bus in Newcastle West. While K.R. was down and claimed that the, the brick incident was not related to the new timetables, it underlines how dangerous the job can be and has been particularly for these drivers since the, the rollout and the changeover. One constituent, a, a, a pensioner who lives in Waratah and has health issues limiting her, her um, mobility, contacted my office soon after the changes and she told me this and I quote, it used to take me 15 minutes to get to Katara from my house. I need to take the trip pretty frequently but now it takes me an hour and 25 minutes. 
I used to be able to catch the 111 straight from Waratah through to Katara, and now I have to catch the 25 to Broadmeadow and transfer to a, onto a 27. It's an absolute mess, she said. Another constituent told, told us about her children who go to school in Katara are now facing a much more difficult trip. She said, and I quote, they used to be able to catch a bus from right near our place straight to school. Now they need to leave much earlier and cross a major road to catch a bus which takes them to a major shopping centre so that they can catch another bus which will stop near the school. Unquote. A young man with a disability who lives in my electorate and works in Warners Bay will now have to catch four buses, four buses, four to get buses. to work. The main bus route that took students from the southern and western suburbs of Newcastle into the University of Newcastle Callaghan campus has disappeared. These are but a few examples. Worse still, the Minister has um, so far reacted with contempt, unfortunately, contempt for wars and commuters and their concerns, and has gone so far as to threaten funding to a major in infrastructure project if we continue to complain. This is unacceptable. I call on the Minister and I call on the Premier, I call on the Premier first of all to intervene in this chaos. Our drivers need protection, our commuters need um, certainty and security, and as for the world class transport system, promised by the Transport Minister, we have a third level, third tier transport system at the moment. Thank you. <coughs> I call the member for Charlestown. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Get seven minutes. No, uh, four minutes. I. <laughs> well, I thought I'd try. Um, I rise to support the member for Walls End's notice of motion, which asks that this House notes that from July 2017, Newcastle buses and ferries have been operated by Keolis Downer after being privatised by the very decline government. Two, acknowledges that a number of services have been cancelled without warning, stranding commuters from across the Walls End electorate. And three, urges the Minister for Transport to work with Keolis Downer to ensure that all Newcastle bus services run so that commuters can get to work or school reliably. The privatisation of Newcastle buses has had a significant impact on both the Charlestown and Walls End electorates. Commuters from across the wider Hunter community depend upon a, re a reliable bus service in order to go about their daily lives. But the privatisation of Newcastle buses has resulted in limited operating hours, altered routes and significantly increased journey times. I'm deeply concerned at the number of complaints I'm receiving regarding the impact that the changed timetables and the bus routes is having on some of the most vulnerable members of our community, including children and people with a disability. Simple commutes to work and school are now untenable. I've heard the experiences of people living with disabilities who have given up their jobs because it's just too difficult for them to be retrained in the new bus routes. A constituent of mine by the name of Jodie uh, has had to give up her work uh, in Hamilton as a result of the fact that she can't actually navigate the new system. Uh, it is just too difficult for her and uh, she can't get private transport into her place of work. I met with a number of parents uh, with uh, children with disabilities, adult children with disabilities who are in the same boat, increased private transport costs, uh, more difficulty with those people being able to get onto um, buses and navigate multiple different buses. Then on top of that, there's also school children who have been left with significantly increased journey times. Some people have even chosen to move homes because they no longer live within a suitable distance from a bus stop. I've had multiple constituents contact my office who have said they actually chose to live in a particular location because it was well serviced by, public bus, by a public bus and those public buses no longer stop near, uh, in fact, their homes. Commuters from across the wider Hunter region are losing independence, social interaction and money, all because of these outrageous changes to our public transport system. 
at a time when government should be pushing to encourage people to use public transport, commuters are getting back in their private vehicles. Public transport is an essential part of making sure that not only do we not have uh, incredible traffic difficulties throughout our cities, but we also need well-resourced um, public transport so that, for environmental reasons. And what we're actually, what, what's happening as a result of this privatisation and the lack of uh, utilisation because of the bad routes is that people are getting back into their cars and increasing traffic gridlocks in Newcastle. Journey times are not only being extended, but also, also due to shorter routes, now they include multiple changes and lengthy walking times. The abolition of many direct bus services has left young school students to cross major roads daily. Many of these children have also been stranded because of delays or missed connections. Prior to the timetabling changes implemented on the 14th of January that the member for Walls End uh, has spoken about, my constituent Rebecca caught the 320 bus which travelled from her home in Warners Bay to Adamstown to get her daughter to school. Since the implementation of the new routes and timetables, Rebecca and her daughter now have to walk 20 minutes to Lake Fairmount Hutton and catch the 28 bus in order to be at school on time. They're leaving home at 6.45 a.m. and not getting home until 5.30 p.m. A 10-year-old girl trying to get to and from school. Rebecca, however, is one of the lucky few who don't have to catch multiple buses, risking delays and missed connections. The 320 bus used to transport many students from the eastern side of Lake Macquarie to a number of schools in Newcastle and the surrounding suburbs. These children are now catching multiple buses, and as I've stated repeatedly in this chamber over the past two weeks, the government needs to ensure that these children have a safe, direct service. Rebecca has spent the last two years planning work, education and other family activities around local public transport. Rebecca is now planning for her daughter to change schools, all because of the disaster that is Newcastle buses. This is not fair on the children in my electorate. Many others, like Rebecca, have made the decision to get in private cars and drive to work, school or university because the new bus routes are more of an inconvenience than the current Newcastle CBD parking chaos. That is why I fully support and commend the member for Walls End's motion to call on the Minister for Transport to work with Keolis Downer and ensure that all Newcastle bus services run Before so that commuters can get to work or school reliably. The <laughs> on the, on the, matter of the, on the motion, I call the member for Oakley. I thank uh, members of the House uh, for waiting patiently. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, an important issue for those uh, living in Newcastle. And I, remember, I thank the member for Walls End for bringing this motion uh, to the House's attention. Now, unfortunately, I only have um, uh, four minutes, but um, we might seek um, leave if I can speak for another four, maybe five, <laughs> maybe half an hour. <laughs> Question time is 2.15, so maybe an hour and 15, hour and 25. Uh, there is, um, for those that are uh, live streaming this on the internet um, from Newcastle, there is a transport revolution in Newcastle, led by this side of the parliament. <clears throat> well, that's taken a minute. We have a vision for Newcastle to bring people back to the city centre, strengthen connections between the city and the waterfront, create job opportunities, Mr Speaker, provide more public spaces and deliver better public transport. 650 million in revitalising Newcastle program is helping breathe new life, a, fresh, a breath of fresh air in Newcastle. In 2017 was a year of major progress and change. We completed the physical, commenced I should say, commenced the physical light rail work in numerous locations, completed and opened the Newcastle Interchange, commenced manufacturing of the new light rail vehicles, developed and delivered new public spaces across the city. 
We are changing the way Newcastle is trans is is. It is. It is. I was there only a couple of months ago. There is a lot of development happening in Newcastle. We are changing the way people are travelling. And it's because of this side of the house, Mr. Temporary Speaker, Mr. Temporary, Temporary Speaker, it's because of this side of the house that we're getting on with the job of changing the way Newcastle wow. travels. 25th of August 2017, the government announced the allocation of an extra $150 million to the program, taking the total investment to more than $650 million. An additional $150 comprises of $75 million, million plus, um, $75 million plus, and on future land sales for new public spaces on the former heavy rail corridor, $35 million to deliver white, white fly free uh, light rail, much needed footpath upgrades, upgrades and, and trees at, at um, key locations in the Hunter and Scott Streets, $40 million to deliver road intersection upgrades, uh, and much, much more. Light rail is a key pillar, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a transport connector, Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker. And of course we are providing, under this plan, provide frequent and reliable travel options through the city centre. Connect key activity precincts, rejuvenate Hunter and Scott streets and help restore them to the thriving main streets that they once were, Mr Deputy Speaker. Major on-street connection to, uh, for Newcastle Light Rail commenced September 2017. I do want to point out a couple of points here. In regards to Newcastle, additional points here. Uh, I seek leave, Mr Tem Temporary Speaker, I seek leave. The question is that the member's time be extended, or that opinion say aye? Aye. 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 Guess, uh, I think the ayes have it. The member's time is extended by three minutes. Thank you. Uh, to take the 2.15 at least, uh, Mr uh, uh, Temporary Speaker. In fact, let's not worry about question time. Let's go to 3.30, 4.30. Oh, okay. um, can we just change the clock? Thank you. Newcastle Transport is a new model for public transport in Australia with a single operator running multiple modes to deliver timetable efficiency, easy connections and locally based approach to ensure best services for customers. Evidence from around the world has shown a locally based multi-model multi mode approach works extremely well in cities like Newcastle. Newcastle government is working with the operator, Keola Scout, to transform the existing Newcastle bus and ferry network into a world-class service for Newcastle. Let's just repeat it for the dummies opposite. World-class service for Newcastle. Keola Scout is one of the world's largest and most experienced transport operators and has devoted enormous time and energies to designing and running services for Newcastle. We are in the early stages of a 10 year journey, Mr Temporary Speaker, and we know there are a number of improvements which need to be made, and these cannot necessarily be turned around straight away. Keolis, Keolis Downer is monitoring the performance. Mr Speaker? Can you control the other side? Protect me from these people. <laughs> Put them on calls. Get them out. Kick them out. Keolis Downer is monitoring the performance of the new network closely and remains open to making changes as necessary when needed. The operator has a strong local knowledge and the team is locally, locally based with decisions made in Newcastle and input sought from stakeholders, key stakeholders, and the community to deliver a better transport for Newcastle. Keola Downer's contract requires them to carry out community consultation before any significant changes are to be made to services. The Voice of Newcastle Community Engagement Program ran from 1st of July to 4th of September last year, uh, 2017. Keola Downer received more than 600 submissions from across Newcastle and across the Lake, the Lake Macquarie. You'll have your chance in a second. Just settle down. The Lake Macquarie community. You'll have your chance to support this in a second. Settle down. Uh, with significant interest from Walls End and Swansea communities, around 33% of the network influenced by the ideas from Voice of Newcastle program. The new network, which was launched in January this year, provides um, 1,200 buses and ferry services each week, including an extra 200 services on Saturday and Sundays. Better connections to train stations with key bus routes timetabled to meet trains. 
better frequencies on core routes, more services on the weekends, and of course, more importantly, increased operating hours on frequent routes with services running between 5am and Mr. midnight. Mr Speaker, I'm here today. Uh, Member yeah, Terry Hall. Very quickly. Uh, Member Terry Hall. Oh, you sit down. Thank you. Member Terry Hall. Well, I've got up before him. I've got up before him. quicker than him. I was up at six seconds. Member Terry Hall has the call. You'll get your chance in a moment, Member for Newcastle. You'll have your chance to support this any minute now. Oh, that's it. Look, thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr Temporary Speaker. And uh, look, I've got to uh, obviously acknowledge the member for Walls End and her diligence in bringing this motion to the House and uh, also acknowledge my uh, incredibly, the incredible oratory uh, from the member for Oatley this morning. And uh, I also know that the member for Karingai is a Nova Catherine himself. And, uh, he has been saying to me on a regular basis the incredible work, the incredible work that the government's delivering in, around, in and around the Newcastle. It's transforming Newcastle with a vision, uh, right, a decade-long vision to deliver Newcastle the better interconnectivity and the network that it needs. And, um, and look, I've got to say, uh, I know the interjections from the member of Newcastle, and uh, when he was on council, he wasn't sure who he was for light rail or against light rail. And uh, no, he's just, he, he may be the member of Look, I'd like to thank the member for Karingai for his interjections. But look, Mr Temporary Speaker, we know that uh, the transport for New South Wales is working uh, closely with Keyless Downer to transform that existing Newcastle bus and ferry network into the world-class service that Newcastle, Newcastle absolutely deserves. After years of neglect, years of neglect, Mr uh, Temporary Speaker, under those opposite, we're now seeing Newcastle thriving. And, uh, and it's, it's a metropolis. It is a metropolis. And uh, it's an exciting time for the people, of, for all the Nova Catrians living in Newcastle. Uh, we're eight months into this, this decade-long journey to improve those services, Mr Temporary Speaker. And we know that uh, there are a number of improvements which need to be made, uh, and these cannot necessarily be turned around overnight. Uh, the reality is that you know, perfection sometimes takes time, Mr Temporary Speaker. Um, and the franchising of the Newcastle Transport Network has, designed, has been designed to allow a single operator to run multiple transport modes, delivering timetable efficiency, provide easy connections and delivery, and a locally based approach to ensuring customers receive that world class public transport experience that they never had under those opposite, Mr Temporary Speaker. It was just a pipe dream to the people of Newcastle and now they're seeing that dream become a reality. The private sector has strong incentives to use infrastructure efficiency as was outlined very clearly by the member for Oatley and deliver the better operational performance and improve that customer experience. Now, private companies such as Keyless Downer are also able to leverage significant global experience operating multiple public transport networks, Mr Temporary Speaker, to deliver the better outcomes for all the Nova Cashians. And, uh, and I've got to say, it's an exciting, it'll be a very exciting time to be a Nova Cashian. We have been working very closely with the community to design that network uh, that the locals do want. Well, yeah, this government has been listening uh, with the development of a new network strongly influenced influenced by the ideas uh, of the Voice of Newcastle program. I mean, that's about that inclusiveness uh, that this government is, uh, is world-renowned for, Mr Temporary Speaker, you know, getting people to put their voices forward. The new network, which was launched in January this year, January 2018, provides more than 1,200 extra weekly bus and ferry services. <coughs> And better connections, and better connections between buses, trains, and ferries. Oh, we know you have a long rail, so you can have your, you'll have your turn in a minute. Uh, but four direct routes have been implemented, and and the outer suburbs to the city centre. These services run every 15 minutes between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday to Friday, Mr. Temporary Speaker. Bus connections have also been improved between key locations such as John Hunter Hospital. Uh, the University of Newcastle, of which I visited on numerous occasions, fantastic institution, and major, and major shopping centres and beaches, Mr Temporary Speaker. So they're just some of the connections that have also been improved uh, between these locations. Interchanging is more convenient due to the timetable connections with minimal waiting time between buses, ferries and trains. I know the interjection from the member for Swansea and said she'll get her time to have her say in a minute. Uh, a well-designed integrated transport network will allow people in the future, Mr Temporary Speaker. I call the member for Newcastle. Thank you, Mr Temporary Speaker. And I want to thank the member for Walls End for bringing this uh, motion to the parliament. It is absolutely timely. In fact, and if I go back in time to the, when uh, Mike Baird, the former Premier, came to Civic Park uh, and he addressed 300 community members there who were protesting against the privatisation of the uh, bus services which were going to come. And he said to us this would not go ahead if they could not promise better services. 
And people in the crowd said to him, well, we will hold you to account. And that is exactly what we're doing here today, holding you to account for a failed privatisation of Newcastle buses. It is an absolute disgrace. In fact, where is the member for Oatley? He wrote to me yesterday, in fact. He wrote to me yesterday and he said, he said, we are having extensive consultation, he said. I was out at Access Disability Services on Monday. They've been there for 40 years. They employ 100 people, 80% of which catch buses. And they said, we were talking to Kiolis Downer and they said, we didn't know, even know you existed here. And they said, well, we've been here for 40 years and everyone else in Newcastle knows we're here. So extensive consultation? No. Improved connections, the member for Oatley said. The member for Oatley says improved connections. Well, let's see this. We've got uh, a letter here from uh, Cathy who says, well, my children travel five kilometres on a, on a former direct route, a direct route formerly, from uh, Adamstown to Georgetown. Now, there are several options, none of which are direct. Detour along Lambton Road, change the bus at McDonald's before backtracking to Taunton Road, waiting 40 minutes between buses. B, travel to the junction, Route 14, then get Route 12, make the back trip, or C, travel to Stewart Avenue interchange and then get Route 12 back again. Is that more direct? No, that's just saying we put on extra, extra routes because we've cut one route into four routes and now you've got to get four buses. So, oh, we've put on so many more new services, everyone. And if you look at what's going on in reality, bus figures are going backwards. On-time running statistics for Newcastle buses have deteriorated. They've gone from 95% in July 2017 down to 79%. Measured mid-journey on-time running fell from 87% to 52%. Oh, here we go. And a note accompanying the, uh, the graph. Kiola Stanner says, Kiola Stanner says, key performance indicators uh, well, target, uh, it was recognised that uh, we didn't actually meet our key performance indicators. But then they make up a whole lot of other excuses. Congested impact, uh, congestion, uh, school formals. Oh, we've never had any school formals before. What's going on? Hey? Oh, I tell you, bus figures going backwards. Now we've got parents for your school travel shake-up because kids are being left on the side of the road. That's the problem, isn't it? My daughter from Melanie arrived at the bus stop at 8.22 intending to catch number 13 bus, which was due to stop. It didn't arrive! Nor did the next one arrive at 8.45. As you can see from the real-time data, the bus was late. The next one was 10 minutes late and appears to have overtaken the first bus that didn't even turn up. So what have we got there? But I think you know, I've got a letter here from Silvana that just explains it all. Public transport's supposed to get better, but it's a total mess. I've been catching buses for over three decades and not one complaint. Coming back from a time off in 2018, it's nothing but a nightmare. I've been late every day. I could walk faster than catching a bus. If it wasn't changing the routes bad enough, the numbers, numbers have changed as well. Yeah, what a disgrace! Uh, the member for Riverston. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. I rise to make a contribution in relation to the notice of motion 2343, which was put on the business paper in September last year, as the member for Walls End told us, before the new timetable was even unveiled, let alone implemented. So we already had a notice of motion to complain about the new timetable, which didn't yet exist. And we're already convinced that we had something to whinge about. In fact, we're going to whinge about the gardens. And like the member for Newcastle, like the member for Newcastle, we were going to come up here and talk about things that happened months ago and pretend they had something to do with the new timetable. He would not answer the question about when those things happened. He would not answer because the vast majority of things to which he was referring happened before the new timetable came into effect. Oh, no. There is too much, too many interjections. The member will be heard in silence now. The vast majority of things he was talking member about Newcastle. before the new time time, which was probably appropriate because that's what the notice of motion referred to, and yet the member for Wilson decided to focus on the new timetable was the problem. Now, we have a little difference there, don't we? Well, there's a sleight of hand. It's really a philosophical objection to private investment in transport infrastructure. That's the real problem that they have. They cannot abide the fact that the private sector might provide anything. What we're concerned about is not who invests 
not the capital, but the service provided to the community. That's what it should be about. Not an ideological objection to the involvement of the private sector, but providing a better service to the community. So let's have a look at some of the facts about the new time zone. The new network provides more than 1,200 extra weekly bus and ferry services for the people of Newcastle. 1,200 extra services. 1,200 extra services surely means that Newcastle residents are being given greater opportunities to move around to meet their needs than was ever the case in the past. Now, there will always be some people, when you change a timetable, when you change routes, there will always be some people advantaged and some people disadvantaged. I get that. That's, that's realistic. That people who were ideally suited to the previous timetable or the previous route may not be so to the next one. But then there are other people who perhaps had their needs neglected for years who will be better served by the new route or the new timetable. And there will be thousands of those people across Newcastle because of those 1,200 extra weekly bus and ferry services able to move people around in a much more coordinated fashion to more logical destinations than was often the case in the past. The, the connections between modes, between buses and ferries, between buses and trains, the, um, the better interchange times will mean that there will be many people who will be advantaged by those changes. But of course, it's life, it's human nature. Who contacts an MP's office? The people who are happy or the people who are unhappy? We all know the answer to that. We all know that people who are unhappy are far more likely to, to raise their voice than those who find that they now have a service that was never there before. That's just human nature. It's to be expected. The other key element of the changes that I need to talk about in um, the new network in Newcastle is that customers in Lake Macquarie can now book buses from or, on, uh, from or near their homes to a local transport hub with new on-demand bus trials, which, which started during the off-peak periods in January 2018. Areas of Dudley, Mount Hutton and Waters Bay have been chosen for the trial, which started on Sunday the 14th of January. Customers are able to book a service and prepay by credit card, by phone, mobile app and so on at the Newcastle Transport Hub or by paying cash to the driver. This new process explores a new way of doing public transport which will reach out to people in those off-peak periods in a more effective way than has been possible in the past. It's a way in which we're being flexible and creative and meeting the needs of the community. Uh, the, the member for Swansea. And the member of Swansea seeks leave to make a contribution to the motion. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, I too would like to congratulate and acknowledge the member for Walls End. Uh, I know only too well what her community is suffering, just like the rest of my colleagues. Um, the member for Newcastle and, of course, the member for Charlestown and the member for Lake Macquarie, who is here with us as well. Uh, the notion that we are exaggerating the difficulty that our constituents are experiencing with the new network is quite shocking. To bury your head in the sand and not understand that the hundreds and hundreds of correspondence letters of correspondence that have been sent on behalf of all of the members to both Keola Stauner and also to the Transport Minister. And to not acknowledge those people is shameful because it is actually a slur on them personally, not on us. We'll cop it. We, we put our hand up to do this job, to represent people. We came here to make their lives better. I think we all do that. But to disregard the concerns of those individuals who have taken the time to share their stories with us. They are in written form with either Keola Stauner or the Transport Minister and for the opposition to come in here and say to us that we are making this up. You are opposite to me. I don't care who you are. What you are, in actual fact, is an absolute fraud. You said, that's the member for Terrigal by the way, they know that there are a number of changes to be made. So you've admitted now that you know that there are changes to be made. So at least you've had the guts to say you've got it wrong and you're going to fix it. So at least that's something that you said. However, the previous speaker before you, uh, for Oatley, said that, and I quote, 
What we have done changes the way Newcastle travels. Well, he couldn't have got it more right, let me tell you. We've got longer travel times. Connectivity does not exist. The inconvenience of multiple journeys and shorter operating hours. Now, I just want to go into a few. I'll, I can actually give you a personal example of all of these. So, we now have a situation where children who live at Swansea Heads and they go to the selective school at Broadmeadow, their trips are now taking one hour and 50 minutes. It used to take less than an hour, longer travel times. Connectivity. You can no longer catch a bus from Swansea or Swansea Heads anywhere past Belmont. That's the next major town centre. That's it. Then you've got to get off and you've got to get on another bus to go to Charlestown. Every second bus at Charlestown goes into Newcastle, but the alternate bus, you have to get off and get off on another bus to go into Newcastle. You don't actually go to the interchange, the wonderful interchange that you built, because the buses don't go there. They take you down the other end of town, and then guess what? You've got to, at Perkins Street, get on another bus to go to the interchange. Four buses. Let's talk about um, the shorter operating hours. I do want to share this with the House because I think this is one of the most dangerous aspects of what we're debating here today. And that is, I had the police call me. There was, they were called to a, a bus, actually, that was heading north. There was a man on there who was uh, creating a disturbance. Opposite, at another bus stop, was a lady and her two very young children. They had to evict, the police had to evict the prob problematic passenger off the bus. The lady was that stranded. Was there castle, were no buses yeah. actually that coming now. Uh, the police, <laughs> what, we, what we've actually had to do now, the police were so concerned about this lady because of this drug affected passenger, they said to her, uh, look, we will drive you home because there was actually no bus after 6.23 at Belmont on a Saturday. So what we've done now is, I think it's called um, cost shifting. We're now taking away from transport and now the police are actually escorting Hi. our citizens around the, 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 our electorates. Hi. The member's time has expired. Speaker, seek leave. Uh, the member for Lake Macquarie seeks leave. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank everybody here for participating in the debate on the member for Walls End's motion. And can I just uh, just uh, calm things down a little bit for everybody because I think there is uh, a lack of perhaps understanding of the severity of the issues being raised by members from this side of the house from government members. I, I, I appreciate that they're given a certain amount of advice from the Minister's office and uh, they have to um, uh, uh, prosecute that particular argument. But the reality is that there are many stories uh, within our region that uh, have been articulated by um, the member for Wall, Walls End, the member for um, uh, Swansea, the member for Charlestown, the member for Newcastle and that they're not dissimilar from uh, stories that I'm hearing in my own electorate. The question is whether or not these have been done with some kind of uh, uh, in ignorance or, um, or, or incompetence, I, and I, I'm not going to suggest such a thing. I've met people from the Department of Transport, and I have no doubt that anybody that set out to uh, um, develop the um, improvements in the public transport system didn't set out to do damage to people who had existing services. But of course, it is, it is the, the consequence of those changes that occurred. I, I heard the member for Oakley and the member for Riverston uh, talking about, of course, if you're going to add new services or change them, there's going to be, if I can paraphrase, there's going to be winners and losers. And yes, that's the case. Perhaps there have been people who have been ignored for far too long, and we would all agree. I'm sure we've all written, uh, as we have around the, the House, asking the Minister to extend bus kilometres so that we can add into our communities. But it's another thing when we actually take away something from communities where people, individuals, families have invested in that, that particular area because of an existing public transport system. So this isn't just a, a simple matter of saying, well, somebody um, one kilometre over or something like that have now got something they didn't have before. Have it's nice for them, but they didn't expect it then, even if they were asking for it. But somebody who's purchased a house, or I can give you a very good <laughs> example in Cardiff South, uh, an ageing couple, they're still quite fit, they're in their probably late or mid to late 60s, they, they've lived at the uh, uh, house for quite some time, they've actually invested in it to bring it up to, to scratch so that they can make an age in place. It's a perfect location for them. It's a very, very substantial investment they've made. The bus route that is just across the road, the bus stop from them, they can actually take to uh, a destination just up that line where 
um, the woman's mother is in an, an aged uh, facility. And that same line takes them on to Garden City, to Qatar, where there's uh, medical services and other facilities they want. Now that's gone. They now have to, they've got an option of, of catching a bus if they go for a walk. Of course there's an option for a bus, there's public transport for them. But it's not going to be an option as they age in place. And therefore they're looking at now, what do they do? They're going to have to sell and move on. Are they going to buy a car in the interim? Because they didn't need the car. And I'm hearing this story all the way along. So all these people have lost uh, opportunities and we have um, many examples of people's special needs who are missing out. Now, did the Minister set out to do that? No, I don't believe that for a, for a moment. When he's um, talking about an extra thousand services, did he sit down there and divide the services up to, to work that out? No, I don't think he did. I think that he's actually uh, 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 genuinely uh, proud of what he's delivering. But what we're hearing from um, the, the members here cannot be dismissed. This is having a huge impact on our local community and I'm very pleased with the meeting I had with transport officials yesterday where they've indicated they are willing to look at um, these, uh, these uh, changes that might be needed. So I'd just like everybody to realise that this is a genuine uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Minister. Uh, can I say please, please, to the Minister? Yes, yeah, seek leave uh, The Minister please. seeks leave to make a contribution. Leave granted, leave granted to the Minister. The Minister has the call. Um, uh, I've obviously observed the debate uh, upstairs in my office and I want to thank all members uh, for their contribution. Sorry I'm short of breath, but the lap line will do that too. Um, but I, I want to thank everyone for their contribution and uh, acknowledge what uh, the member for Lake Macquarie just said. Um, he's right. There is an opportunity for the network to be reviewed and that was again indicated uh, to him and uh, all members should be aware of that. Um, because ultimately, when any timetable is bedded in, um, the aim of timetable adjustments is obviously to maximise uh, the benefits for the maximum number of people, recognising that some people will be affected. Uh, it's fair to say that um, when you have a network uh, like we watched with Newcastle, where over a four-year period there was a drop in patronage of around 14% uh, in terms of the number of people catching public transport, that's a network that's not working. Um, and we all want to see people utilising uh, public transport. Um, very pleasingly, um, and you know, based on this data, um, what I would say is, is that um, we are starting to see some positive signs uh, in terms of it. So uh, the patronage figures that the department's provided to me, and that's a monthly comparison um, in terms of that patronage, uh, in January 2017, uh, there was 304,330 trips. Uh, January this year, uh, with the implementation with the new operator, 319,360 trips. So that's an improvement, uh, which is a good sign for the city. Um, and I think that just in itself says that people, you know, if you compare January 2018 to January 2017, um, that's an increase of around 5%, which is good. It's what we want. Now what I'm hearing uh, from a lot of the, the members and what I'm seeing in my correspondence relates to people who have been disadvantaged because there's been a service change as a result of their immediate service. And uh, that's where I think it's important we go and have a look. Uh, because we all ultimately want to see public transport uh, succeed. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm conscious uh, particularly of people with disabilities and I, I know that's been raised by a number of members. So I think that's you know, important. The Disability Services Minister and I both indicated to the member for Newcastle that uh, issues around access industries we want to have a look at. Uh, and, and that's important. And I, better than anyone, along with the Minister, know about the barriers in terms of human rights when it, when it comes to, to people with uh, disabilities. Um, when you increase services by around 1,200 uh, to a city which um, I think, you know, in terms, of, in terms of what people are looking for, frequency in the ferries, frequency in the bus services, uh, obviously better connections between the modes of transport, uh, that's a good aim. Um, but again, what we're talking about, I think, is that you might have a number of people who are used to a service that used to be outside their front door and might have changed. And that's where I think the review comes, uh, comes into it. And that's where I think it's important uh, that the operator uh, with transport and like, with local members uh, have a look at it. The other um, exciting point that I'd make uh, for those residents who might uh, 
be subjected to that change is that we've now got on demand. Uh, and that is very much where, and I know, Sonia, you just looked across them, but seniors are the types of people who are going to benefit from being able to book a door to door service. Great service. Door to door, door, -to -door service. And, and it's in its infancy that, you know, that notion and mode of, mode of transport. And again, let us see how it goes and expand it. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm saying there. So I want to thank members for their participation. We're going to keep working at it, and I think we'll deliver a great outcome for the people of the heart. Yeah. Uh, thank the Minister and call the member for Wall Sand and reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And the number of speakers that we had today, particularly the fact that we have every member in the Hunter that's affected by this service speaking, that includes Labor and Independents, is a testimony to, to the fact that we care about public transport. We all care about <coughs> public transport and we want to make it better. I thank the member for Charlestown, Oatley, Terrigal, Newcastle, Riverston, Swansea, Lake Macquarie, um, the Minister for Transport and member for Bega. It's been a, a good debate. Um, I'm pleased, I'll go to the, the Minister first because I'm pleased that the Minister um, came down and got involved with the debate. I'm pleased to hear that he mentioned that there is an opportunity for a network review. That's what we're asking for um, because there have been major problems with this service in so many ways and they've been highlighted by every one of the members who spoke on this side of the House today. Yet we acknowledge that there were problems with the services before, but they certainly haven't, unfortunately, been improved. Um, the min minister talked about data um, and some positive signs, but I wonder if those number of trips are the trips because people now who were once ca catching one bus now are catching three or four, but we'll work that all out. I'm glad that the minister also acknowledged his concern about people with disabilities and he's conscious of their needs, and so let's hope that we can get some improvements there and those people, particularly that the member for Charlestown mentioned, who have lost their job because they can't get to work. Let's see what we can do about fixing that, because that's what we're about today. I'm here today to talk about how we can fix it, to make it better for people. That's what I want, and that's why I've been here for 11 years, because my job is to fix it for people, and that's what our job is as MPs. Um, a member for Charlestown talked about the people with disabilities who have had to quit their jobs. Let's hope that that can be fixed up now that the Minister's listened to that. Um, she talked about the proxim proximity of some of the public transport services that are now longer, no longer available. That's a worry. She mentioned about young people, young students who have to cross dangerous roads to get to school, which is a worry. The member for Oatley, unfortunately, who's a really smart guy, but he seemed to be reading the wrong motion today. He talked a lot about um, trains when I hadn't mentioned trains in the motion, but that's okay. Um, he was, you know, advocating very hard for the government, and I understand why he did that. He did talk about a world-class transport service, but unfortunately, what we have right now is a third-world transport service. So let's make sure that we get that improved. The member for Terrigal who's also a smart man, was a little bit off track today. He talked about transport for New South Wales. Um, he, he, uh, he talked about uh, easy connections and delivery of services. We haven't quite found that yet, but we're hoping for that, and we hope to see some changes. The member for Newcastle made a good point about when Mike Baird was a Premier, and he came and talked to Civic at Civic Park and said that he wouldn't uh, go ahead with its service if he couldn't promise better services. So. Let's hope that um, the government makes sure it holds itself to that. He also highlighted um, the, the complicated um, bus routes that some people had and the time-consuming journeys that they had to take, which is really doesn't encourage anybody to catch public transport. It doesn't matter where you are. The member for Ris Riverston was a little bit confused because even though they started in January, they did... July last year was when... KL's down it did actually take over the network. Um, so just wanted to comment on that because we live there so we know. Um, the member for Swansea also spoke very eloquent. She, eloquently. She talked about the government at the, time, at, the, at the time refusing to acknowledge the problems there are with the services, but the, the minister has got up and, and has been made aware of those. The member for Lake Macquarie also highlighted all the things that we've been talking about. So thank you all for for being so diligent about this debate, and I urge you to support it. Thank you.